Hey folks, how's it going? Well, we're back at our old carburetor table again, so I thought I'd make a continuation of my carb series, and this time I'm going to talk about chokes. Automatic chokes, to be precise. Um, there's going to be a lot to talk about this subject, so I may break this into two videos. I know people kind of get antsy when you start trying to sit through a 15-minute video with me just pretty much talking non-stop so I probably will break this up into shorter chunks for you so I've seen a lot of videos on YouTube these cold start videos I like to watch cold start videos um, and I see a lot of people with carbureted vehicles that just seem to have such total trouble getting a car to start and I know that's kind of the point but uh, for a cold start, everybody likes these pumpage, crankage, cold starts, and uh, you know, cold natured stuff and backfiring and things like that. And especially these people that kind of get a uh, some kind of a arousal from that, uh, you know, whatever. But if you're going to be driving a carbureted vehicle pretty often, it kind of gets to be a drag to have to let it warm up and you know fiddle with gas and things like that before you can even drive it away from where it's parked and so um, you see a lot of people that have for whatever reason they just don't have a functioning choke so uh, I'm going to talk about several different things pertains to automatic chokes and I think this will probably help enlighten you and maybe get some of you to take a second look at these chokes again and maybe have a better running vehicle in the end I sure would hope so so okay first thing let's talk about what is a choke that sounds pretty obvious but choke is just that uh, this is your air intake to the carburetor right here and this is your choke plate so what a choke does is a cold engine especially in very cold temperatures needs um, it needs a richer mixture to run and stay running and you know essentially be drivable um, so what the automatic choke does or any kind of choke for that matter is it has a plate here as you see that's moving with my fingers that closes to richen it cuts the amount of air that's able to be ingested into the engine through the carburetor but it does not control it does not uh, do anything with the air air mix the fuel mixture excuse me so basically what you're doing is you're just basically um, reaching in the mixture up with this plate you get more fuel and less air so that's what a choke does that's the purpose of one so now that we know essentially what the choke is let's look at how they work um, now we're not going to be talking about manual chokes. Manual chokes are a throwback to the very old days before they could figure out how to invent an automatic choke, I guess. But um, I actually know some people that still use a, a, a manual choke. Uh, one of my subscriptions does. He, I'm not going to name him. He's a good guy. I like him a lot. You know, <laughs> I'm not going to call him out. But hopefully, this video making. Uh, inspire him to take a second look at his own situation there but okay we're assuming when you have a cold engine that you'll know you'll, the automatic choke will work so what I'm going to do is I'm going to manually I'm going to reset this choke plate and everything back to the open position of how it would be when you turned your vehicle off with it running warmed up and running so let me set the camera down and do that real quick Oh, okay. This one's a little sticky. Sorry about that. 
Let's see here. Okay, well this one's not going to cooperate. This one has got, a, I think it may have a piece missing off of it, but it's been kind of messed with, but we'll just have to improvise. All right, now this is how normally the choke would look with a warmed up engine and, you know, it's just turned off at night. Say so you come home from work or whatever, you drive a carburetor vehicle. The choke plate's going to be all the way open. There's no need to, to have any uh, enriching of the fuel mixture. So, uh, this is what you have. First thing when you go out in the morning before you touch the gas or anything. So, you get in your vehicle and you pump the gas a couple times. You know, the instructions, the older car instructions, I always said to press gas fully to the floor uh, like one time if the temperature was a certain. Uh, dropped a certain amount that was really cold like maybe two times or whatever so when you hit the gas this is what happens part of what happens it flips the choke closed you now this will as you see this choke is it's almost all the way it's got a little bit of give in it right there I use some non scientific terms sometimes but uh, got a little gap there and so this one is adjusted I'll get into the adjustment of it later on but this one I can tell right away is adjusted pretty correctly because to, for a baseline because it, when the engine starts and it sucks a little bit on it it is to get some air through here so anyway so you pump the gas a couple times you set the choke automatically and the engine cranks over and this rich mixture gets sucked in and the engine fires right up and starts to run. Now, here's a device I'm, I've talked about briefly in the other videos. This is called a choke, it's, people call it a choke pull off, it's actually called a vacuum brake. Like brake, like breaking glass. But uh, it's called a choke pull off, anyway, what do you want to call it? But as you can see, it's basically a small vacuum chamber. Uh, this has got a rubber hose. This is the manifold vacuum. This 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 circuit here, and anytime the engine starts and runs, this thing retracts inward because of vacuum. And what it does, the purpose of this is to now this one's not exactly adjusted right. I can tell, um, and we get into more of this later. We're just giving you some theory right now. This thing will always retract in, and what it does is it always pulls this open just a little bit. It keeps it from going all the way closed. See that? It kind of, like I said, this one's out of adjustment, but this vacuum brake is. But uh, I think somebody's monkeyed with this linkage. I've, this is just a junkyard carburetor. So uh, that's what that does. And. You need to always have these. Like I said, when we get into the adjusting the choke section, um, I'll explain why in greater detail. So, all right. Well, we've covered theory, a little bit of theory, uh, naming the parts, what we have. Um, this, of course, is your choke housing. It's very obvious. It's got a choke coil in here. And I've got another one here, a part, another parts carburetor that I will disassemble here in just a little bit to show you what's in this. But um, so we've got the choke housing, we've got the vacuum brake, we've got the choke plate, we've got our associated linkage. So if you have a non-functioning choke. Um, one of the first things you'll need to do is you'll need to be sure you at least have all the parts to it. You know, if you're missing choke thermostat or housing or any of the linkage or this part here, you need to get all that and get it set back up so it's actually connected. You know, of course. So, all right. So, I've talked about 10 minutes. I think I'm going to break these into 10 minute chunks. Like I said, I kind of, I know I kind of get a little bit antsy trying to watch videos that are too long at a time so I'm going to cut this one off at 10 minutes and uh, start another. See you in the next video.